Victor Schauberger was a naturalist. He was a forester, as was his dad. They spend their life walking through the forest and observing the wildlife, observing the streams, the rivers, observing the fish in the rivers, but really observing the way you and I do not observe. Because nature is your greatest teacher. It teaches you what you need to know. We think we have to go to university and get a, a BA and a master's and a PhD in forestry or something, uh, environmentalism. No, that's not where the answer is. <laughs> Schauberger never went to university, but he was a keen observer when he walked through the woods with his dog and he studied nature because he realized nature is our greatest teacher if we have the patience and the time to observe. He discovered in this mountain stream, rushing water, he found trout who were completely still and they weren't washed away. How can that be? They're not moving their fins very much either. It's just like they're sitting in calm water. Yet this water is rushing down over them as if they're unaffected by it. There's a great lesson to be learned there that fish realize something about currents and water temperature and the energy that is in the water as it runs down the mountain. It's always running over rocks, creating vortices, and the water is naturally energized. And then he discovered that the greatest lift the water has is at four degrees centigrade, not at five or six or seven, but at four degrees. And when he discovered that, that led him to the fact that he could float logs that would normally sink in water because they were so heavy that he could build wooden chutes and roll these logs down these wooden chutes when he controlled the water temperature at four degrees, no problem. They just, weight was no problem. University boys didn't know anything about that and they never took him seriously ever because he didn't have a degree from a university. Same is true today. Why do these people think, the academics, that an ordinary man who is very observant and very patient and has for many years observed nature very closely knows things that no university knows or ever will know. So they can't take him seriously because he never went to university. Not a nice characteristic of somebody who supposedly is a well-educated and highly educated person. Doesn't that make you think of snobbery? Doesn't that make you think that you're better than somebody else? Well, you've let your degree and your education go to your head. There are good academics who aren't like that. Seek them out and, and listen to them. They have valuable information to impart to you. Austria is going to recreate one of his ancient flumes and rebuild it just to show people who are interested. There are more and more people interested in Victor Schauberger and his um, inventions, and they come to visit from all over the world to visit Austria because his, his son and his grandson now has taken over. They have a whole museum where he gives lectures and people are very interested. They've read his books and obviously you read his books, you're going to get something that you're not going to get from the academics, from the university crowd. So there's an increasing, increasing uh, interest in Victor Schauberger and, uh, and his research. He also came, he was also a proponent of implosion. He said the world has gone down the wrong path. They've gone down the path of explosion. Think about it. Everything we do is primarily based on explosion. The internal combustion engine explodes to create power. He says the greatest power is in implosion. When water goes through a funnel, it has a swirling action like a tornado. How powerful is a tornado? Well, it can lift an 18-wheeler and throw it aside. An 18-wheeler. So he said, we went down the wrong road. The answer lies in nature, and nature tells us implosion is the proper way and we've gone down the road of explosion, which is destructive.